and welcome to this short tutorial video. Today we are going to cover the creation of a parabolic distortion effect, which is just a really fancy way of saying we are going to make the screen appear curved. This effect is good for making it seem as if you're looking through a helmet. It's the same effect that you'll see in games like Halo and Destiny, so if you've played those games you'll be very familiar with it. And we are going to implement this into the competitive shooter HUD. So I have loaded up a first person template and added in the competitive shooter HUD into the template. Um, so we achieve this by creating a material and having the material assigned to a retainer box and anything that you wish to have curved, any element you wish to have curved needs to be within that container, the retainer box, sorry. So if we go ahead and you can create this material anywhere you like, I'm just going to keep it next to the widget blueprint for the shooter HUD. So we're going to create a new material and give that a name of your choosing. I will call mine M underscore curved HUD FX. Right, and if we jump on in and open up this. So within here, we want to head over to the last input node over here. And on the details panel, under material and material domain, we're going to change this to a user interface. Now directly underneath material domain, you have blend mode. And you're going to want to change the blend mode from opaque to alpha composite. Okay, now this next part is basically the math that allows us to create this effect. Um, so I'm just going to run through it quickly and uh, you can just follow along. So we want to start off by creating texture coordinates. If I could learn to spell, it would make this a hell of a lot easier. I'm going to use two of these to begin with. And then from there, we're going to pull off a component mask. Component mask. And we're going to need another one of those as well. Uh, I should have just done it this way in the first place. Right, and we're going to change the top one here to be G. And we're going to change the bottom one here to be R. And then from there, we're going to drag this, and we're going to drag it off. We're going to add a multiply. And put this into V. And on this multiply, we're going to go for a negative 2. Down here, we're also going to drag this off and create a multiply. And that multiply is going to be coming from here. We'll have a subtract, which we're going to leave as 1. Plug that into here. Then from here, I'm making a right old mess of this, aren't I? From here, we're going to go back into another multiply. Plug this into here, and this into here. Um, and then we're going to go into yet another multiply. Put that out of the way this into the bottom of here and this is where we're going to create the first uh, parameter which is going to be your distortion amount this parameter is going to be used for determining the curvature of the screen so it can be changed during runtime and you can fine-tune this to, to suit your needs basically so we're going to look for a scalar parameter scalar Parameter. Is that scalar parameter or would you say scalar parameter? Scalar parameter? We're going to go with scalar parameter and we're going to call this the distortion amount. And from here, we we'll plug this into the multiply. So in here, your default value is what's going to determine the curvature of the screen. So we will begin with just point 0.2 and I will show you the effects of changing that in just a little while. So off of here, what we now want to do is add in more of these. Right, and this is also going to remain, going to be R, and the bottom one's G. And then from here, we are going to go into an add. And 
from the add, we're going to pull off of the G down into here. And we are going to go into an append, which is append vector under math. Plug that into the ball of there. And we're going to take R and plug that into the append. And then we're going to go into an if. And from here, we're going to plug the append into here. And we're going to grab another texture coordinate. And for the texture coordinate, we are just going to plug this into the bottom two on here. And for this second node down, we are going to promote that to a parameter, which we're going to call zero because it is just a parameter with a default value of zero. And we can now plug in the distortion amount into the top of the if command. And then from here, we are going to want to add in a texture sample parameter. 2D sample parameter 2D. And I'm going to call this one Slate UI. You can call this whatever you like, but when you've created this parameter here, you're going to have to take a note of it because we will need to use that later on. And from here, we're just plugging that into there. And then RGB is going to be going into final color. And RGBA is going to be going up into opacity. And there you have it. That is the graph. So if we just hit save. And we can close it out. Now what we want to do next is open up the widget blueprint for the shooter HUD. And within here, we are going to want to add in a retainer box. Down into the retainer box. But correction, before we go any further with this, I've just remembered I do also need to go back into the curved HUD effects and under slate UI or whatever it is you've ca called this parameter 2D, you are going to want to go to the da, 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 where we're going, sampler source and we're changing this from texture asset to shared clamp and what this will do is it will prevent tiling across the, the screen. Hit save again. Okay. Now, this retainer box, you're going to want to drag out to fill your screen. And we are going to set the anchors to all four corners there. Now, within the retainer box, under the effects category, you have effect material. And you've guessed it, that is exactly where our new material is going to be plugged in. And under here you have the texture parameter. Now this is the 2D parameter that we set and I called mine Slate UI. Please make sure that you put this in exactly as you have it named within the material, otherwise it's not going to work. Now all you need to do is drag this retainer box back up to the top just underneath content. Now you're safe enough with the competitive shooter HUD to just take this anchor here OV anchor, which is overlay, and drop this as a child of the retainer box. So now what that will do is the retainer box, anything within this retainer box, will now have this curved HUD effect applied to it. The thing with retainer boxes you need to remember as well is that they can only have one child. So if you have multiple elements that you want to apply this curved effect to, if you're not doing this for the shooter HUD, you're going to have to make sure that all of those elements are underneath one overlay which thankfully with the competitive shooter HUD, they already are. All right, and if we hit, uh, it's all saving, hit compile and save. And if we now jump into the demo map, we can just show here that things in the center of the screen will just remain the same. And um, the curve gets stronger the further out to the side of the screen it gets. So you'll see here that there is a slight curvature to the intermediate points that you're seeing on the screen. 
but it's it's minimal because it's closer to the center of the screen. And if we go through here to persona kill count, as you can see again there is curvature. The curvature is a little bit more extreme because this is further out to the side of the screen. And if we go through here into medals, medals should not be affected whatsoever. They are perfectly the same as they were before. Okay. And again, achievements should not really be affected at all. No, they are perfectly fine. And into the health bar, you can see that there is curvature. And if we carry on through, so we can add on the armor bar as well. Again, you can see that there is curvature. Now, the thing to remember with this is it will pull the screen in. So you might have to do some adjustments with the retainer box to position the elements to exactly where you want them to be on the screen. So what we can do just now is take the retainer box and I can simply drag this down a bit and I can also drag it out a little bit. And now if we load that up and Intermediate points are all still going to be in the same sort of place. I should have really jumped ahead to the, the health bar. It's probably going to be the best example. We're coming up to next, I believe. Yes, so the health bar is now back down into the bottom of the screen. And again, you can see the same again with the armor bar. And if I carry on through to the weapon bar, you will also see that is has a slight curvature and it is back down to the bottom of the screen again. So when it comes to the curvature value, you can increase this simply by changing the distortion amount default value. So for instance, if I take the 0.2 and jump it up to say 0.8, save that again. Sorry, this is taking a second. And if we jump back and what we'll do is we'll skip ahead to here and hit play so what you will notice now okay that's an extreme amount of curvature there a very extreme amount of curvature there but you get the idea you can play around with this distortion value to get the effect that you're you're looking for uh, Try 0 0.5. As you can see, changes the, the curvature effect on the screen. So there you have it. Nice and simple, easy to implement. Um, what I will say is I gathered a lot of this material from a gentleman called Jeff Keaton, also known as Zag. He has a blog. I will put that up on the screen and we will provide a link to that in the description of the video below. He has a couple UE4 tutorial type blogs on the go. He also has a Twitter account where I believe he's regularly posting up uh, little UE4 nuggets of information that you might find interesting. So I do suggest heading over and giving him a check out. But uh, as for the tutorial, we're all good. Thank you very much for watching.